What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to do some cool grainy ink bleeds. Alright, before we start the video, I just want to let you know that this effect has not been uh, made up by me. Uh, I'm simply uh, sharing it with you. The original creator of this effect, uh, as far as I know, is uh, Hunter on Instagram. I'll show you some examples on the screen right now. He has some really cool logo design work and I asked him if he was cool with me doing a tutorial on it on my channel and he was cool with that. Um, so yeah, if you want to check him out on Instagram, there's a link in the description. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the tutorial. I got some text here. Uh, the font is BTE Sporty and I'm just going to go and make a white background layer. So the first thing I want to do is go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll convert it to a smart object so we can edit it later if we are not satisfied with the blur. Uh, but let's go with 10 for now. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a gradient map to manipulate how the bleed works. So let's start with just a black and white gradient. And for the background color, let's make a teal color or sign color. A little bit like this. And we'll make this, uh, we'll leave this black. And the trick here is to add another color like really low to the black value. So for example, maybe like a dark purple. Yeah, if we make this a little bit darker, as you can see, there's a really faint, like purple uh, glowing edge uh, around here. And that's basically what we're looking for here. The harder we blur it, the more you can actually see the color. But if we play with this and we drag the gradient in a little bit more, we can make the text also a little bit thicker. Um, and we can also just play with the color. So for example, if we make a little bit more light, maybe if we do like a green color or something, yeah, it really depends on what you want. You can get really creative with this. All right, so and to finish this off, we'll add a noise layer. Uh, so we'll just make a new layer. And with Shift Backspace pressed, we'll get up the Fill menu. And we'll fill it with a 50% gray. And I'll go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And for the amount, I think we're going to pick something like between 10 and 5. So let's just go with 7, not with 75, but with 7.5. And, and now we're going to play with the blend modes a little bit. So the linear dodge uh, works really well on the darker colors. So the overlay really works well on the edges. And I think for this one, yeah, this is really distresses the edges, makes them really noisy. And with the pin light, it makes it a little bit more subtle. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with the linear light and I wanna lower the Gaussian blur to something like seven maybe. And then in the gradient map, we'll turn this into another hue, something like purple, so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, so if you want to, Hunter also has a shop where he sells a lot of these gradient maps uh, so you don't have to experiment with them yourself. Uh, so he has some really cool presets on this and I also will link in the description for this one as well. All right, so let's uh, see if we can distress this a little bit extra so uh, we can add a displacement map if we want to. And I'm gonna use a displacement map from Black Market's Crash Machine. And as you can see, the displacement map is really like roughing up uh, the edges here. But if we uh, lower this, the displacement will also get blurred. And this, you probably won't see it that well anymore. So let's just make the uh, displacement map a little bit more drastic. And now you can kind of see the dents. But if we lower the Gaussian blur to something like 3, you'll start seeing these... Uh, like holes and like uh, imperfections, I guess. Uh, so yeah, it really depends on how you like to edit this. Uh, I think this is also pretty cool. And um, perhaps we can just do a subtle box blur afterwards. So, which is one pixel. So we can actually preserve the displacement map uh, while also keeping the Gaussian blur. Um, all right, so another thing that you can do, uh, which is actually really cool is, I'm just gonna duplicate this first, make the old one invisible. And we're going to delete all of the smart filters here. So a way to customize the blur uh, where you want it is uh, by going to Filter, Blur Gallery, and the Field Blur. And here we can just pinpoint where uh, we want our blurs to be drastic. So for example, uh, let's say we want this to kind of bleed together, the L and the A here at the bottom. We can just up the blur amount here. But then if we pin another one here, we can make it a little bit more sharp uh, around here. And as you can see, you can really experiment with how drastic you want your blur and you can place it really like uh, pinpoint accurate, I guess. So for example, if we just go with this, 
with one smart filter, we picked where we want the blurs to be and where we wanted to keep it like, I guess, sharp. Uh, and now we can also just displace this as well and do another box blur. All right, so I guess we should just finish this off with a Dreadlabs paper texture. So you can get these in the Dreadlabs web store. There's also a link in the description for that. We'll put this up and we'll put it over the gradient map. And we'll make it completely black and white. And let's see what blend mode we want to. Oh, I like the screen version here. Kind of lightens it up a little bit. All right, I guess that's it for this tutorial. So uh, I'll just place these one on top of another so you can see the difference. It really depends on like how, uh, what you want to do with these filters. Uh, and I really encourage you, this is a really playful effect so you can really experiment with this. You can add multiple colors in the gradient map. Uh, you can play with the blurs, with the distress. Uh, so again, shout out to Hunter uh, for uh, learning me this. And uh, I hope you find this inspiring and you can use it in your next work. Uh, be sure to follow him on Instagram. And with that out of the way, I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons. Because of my patrons, I'm actually able to make these videos for you guys. Um, so more patrons basically means more Dreadlabs content. Uh, and if you don't know, if you become a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files for my tutorials, including this one. You'll get a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store, as well as a Discord role and an exclusive channel. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. And with that out of the way, I want to thank you for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs signing out. See you in the next video.